Hi, I'm Louise. I am co-principal of Ignite Dance Company and also one of the founders of the Tired Movement. I wanted to talk to you today to help you understand a little bit more about the Tired Movement, about some of my um, personal views and experiences. I started dancing from the age of three and I grew up doing the festivals, the dance competitions. Um, I took my exams and ballet and tap and that was the route that I went through. Um, upon my experience, I had a really supportive dance teacher actually, that I think understood that she took influence from black culture. And that was quite significant and important to me because it helped me gain an understanding for where things came from, from what I was doing. I don't think that this has always been the case. There were other schools or teachers that I worked with and from being a child and also within being an adult um, where I've experienced that that's not really touched upon and it's quite a big thing for me because I think that as a society, we're socially conditioned to, you know, believe what we see, what's projected upon us. Um, that's what's kind of put in front of us to be deemed as that's the right way. Um, language, really important. You know, if you're always seen with imagery of somebody that's white and the language associated with that or the imagery associated with that is owner, power, leadership, um, in the dance world, I think often technical technique, um, you know, you have that association then with those words and what you see. And when you see someone that's black, often the labels associated with that other language is cool, urban, street, musical, not often technical, but musical. Um, and that language is very powerful because without knowing, they're then the connotations that you have. So from children to hear that and to see that, they grow up thinking that that's the norm. So if you're a black child, you don't associate with seeing yourself in a position of power or leadership because they're not really the things that were portrayed to you. You didn't see them, you didn't hear them. Um, you don't necessarily think of yourself as aspiring to be this ballet dancer because you're not technical. You're musical, but you're not technical. Um, yeah, for me, having um, children that are black as well, it's really important that I provide them with the language and with the tools that they understand how important black culture was within dance. And actually the labels that should be associated are things like innovators, creators, trendsetters, um, influencers, because that is what black culture has been in a lot of genres, but particularly within dance. Um, and I can do that as a parent and as a teacher, but it's also important that we as teachers or principals or anybody in the dance industry in positions where we can influence and we're in a position to educate children that we do that as well um i think it's it's only right and it's only it's the right way to go about it by teaching a child tap without just saying well this is what the istd syllabus says or this is what the IDTA syllabus says, or this is what the NATD, whatever syllabus it is. I'm not pinpointing one syllabus, but that's not where TAP started. It didn't start with that syllabus. Where did it come from? What was it used to do? How did it come about? You know, surely rather than just come in a room and we teach children steps, we help them understand we're educators. That's what we should be doing. Um, and I think you'll find that black culture will come in nearly every genre probably taught at dance schools up and down the country um so i think it's important and as teachers we owe that and we should respect that 
And I think that you should want to really, if you don't know much about it, educate yourself, research, use this movement actually as an opportunity to find out more information. Um, so yeah, that was the side that I wanted to touch on. There are a few more things and obviously we'll cover this in more detail as we are holding a webinar. Um, things like attire, growing up through the whole festival circuit. I don't think that it was seen to be touched upon really to incorporate children that were of colour. It was very predominantly it was white adjudicators that I would always see and um, it was costuming designed for if you were white you know you all wear the same colour flesh tights even though that's not the colour of my flesh. Um, I remember being at a festival where a girl that used to be in my section used to do a song and dance solo called When the Gollywog Came to Tea. Um, yeah, and no one batted an eyelid and that child placed and nothing was said. We are of a different time, we'd like to think, but actually things aren't as progressive as they should be. And I think if it doesn't really affect you, sometimes you don't think about it, but it doesn't mean that it's not there because you're not feeling it. So I encourage all schools, um, all people in positions where they're, especially if they're teaching children, to be involved in this webinar. I would encourage um, the Federation of Festivals, examining boards, anybody that feels that this is important and they want to help um, to get involved, to sign up to the webinar, to follow our pages and help to create a space for open dialogue where no one's being judged, but we're all just trying to gain a better understanding on how we can make this a more positive situation and ultimately try to improve racial equality in the dance industry.